This video is to accompany the presentation, Cloud Computing Leads to Paperless Education. I will be showcasing three websites that are linked to this presentation. The first one is the wiki page I created with my sixth grade students. In it, uh, I created links to different um, pages as well as links to resources like IXL.com, which is a math um, subscription service that we paid for during the year. We also have Wordle of the Week, uh, School Loop, which is our school website, Science Camp, um, which is our information about our science camp, ex camp experience, and social studies, and some math and reading pages as well. The other page that we have is the Google Docs. I created an account for my students, um, rather an account for me as a teacher, so that my students could share their presentations and any other assignments that they had created. Uh, there's one here called What is Your Favorite Movie? That was a math project where students were uh, assigned to do a survey and then put all the information in a presentation using Google Docs, since all of them had an account. They did it as teams and they also shared it with their team members. So they created this presentation where they wrote their question they did data tables, they did a graph, and um, they did an analysis of their, their results. Um, so again, on Google Docs, they shared most of their work with me as well. Um, in School Loop, which is, was the um, s school's website service that uh, had just been purchased, uh, I believe this was the second year, I created different links uh, basically made a page for each of my subject areas and had resources for each of them. I also uh, embedded Animoto videos or, or slideshows of my students doing work and published some news and um, notices about what was going on in school. As you can see, these are the last events that happened, so I posted them for all the parents and students to see. And I had a homework area where every day we would actually together write down our homework and I would type it and publish it so that if anything happened they would always be able to go back to it. Under art, uh, I did two links to local museums. Um, they also had an art project uh, with one of our art teachers and I created a slideshow while they were doing the Georgia O'Keeffe art project. And I'll play that shortly. it and you're always welcome to go check it out later on um, the website right now is Spangler MUSD and basically what you would do is you would go to the classrooms go to room 110 Miss Herrera and you would be able to see all these links um, the next one was field trips and excursions and for this one I also included links to um, places of interest that have to do with social studies, the De Young Museum in San Francisco, Rosicrucian Museum in San Jose, and then links to other museums around the world that are related to our curriculum. And for science, I included the Tech Museum and the California Academy of Sciences. For PE, uh, we had a ballroom dancing unit all year. I basically taught students different ballroom dancing, and I used YouTube to embed the songs that we danced to. Um, we had different dances. We had salsa, cha-cha, and rumba, swing, merengue, and tango, and I have some other links on the wiki page as well. And then we also did some singing in the beginning of the year. I didn't do it too much. Um, I have some links here, but I also uh, included them or duplicated them in the wiki page. For math, uh, I included key concepts so that parents would get an idea of what was covered in sixth grade. I made a link to the sixth grade curriculum, which was basically our textbook online. And um, this was the link for the textbook, uh, for the access to the textbook. And the homework practice was a 
a link directly to the homework pages so that in case they forgot their workbooks in class or lost it, you could go in there and find the worksheet. I also included the intervention worksheets for those students that uh, needed additional help with any of the concepts. And as I said, iXL is a website that we used. Um, and this is where most of my students were able to go in and log in and do some practice. I'm just going to quickly log in. Let's see this where, uh, and this uh, was one of the students' favorite sites that we used. And basically they could go to any of the grade levels, even though we were sixth grade, sometimes I assigned some fifth grade or fourth grade concepts if they needed some extra help. But the, one of the good things that they had is the reports. It gives me uh, different kinds of reports, either performance, usage, which is how much time they've each spent. So if, for example, if I assigned homework, most of my students had internet, and if I assigned a particular lesson, I could tell if they had done it or not, because I would get it under the reports. Um, it's pretty affordable, and it's something um, that, like I said, my students really enjoyed. Um, I'll show a practice example of what this looks like. Um, so for sixth grade, uh, it is standards based and you can always look at it um, per standard as well. But right now I'll just show you a quick example of what this ratio problem looks like. They also have graphics and they also have awards. So students individually earn awards depending on the lessons they pass and how long or how many lessons they maybe um, have completed in a particular strand of math. So let me go back to my page. Um, so I have additional links here. Um, math Drills Worksheets is another link that I offer for my students to see. It's basically printing drill worksheets um, so they can master their, their times table. So you can just go to this website, go to multiplication, and then select whatever level of multiplications you want and they have different versions for each of them and uh, you can basically take a look at them. Okay, go back again. And again, you can access any of these links at any time. Um, I like this math facts game. I believe it's made in England, and I used it a lot with my students that had not passed or mastered their, their math facts. And um, it's a very simple math facts website. You just click on the level you want in your answer and you press check and it just lets you know if you did it right or not. Now it, it wasn't timed so what I did is I created um, a link for a, an online stopwatch so that students could put the time either stopwatch or count down and then they would start their math facts and then that way they would be able to see if they did it in one minute or not. I usually gave them five minutes for, um, for 100 problems so they could use that as well. And they could do that at home or, or at school. Um, so I, I did have a lot of resources for math because uh, it's so important that they learned. Um, I also had some PowerPoints from our textbook that came with it uh, made available for them. I also made some math video tutorials and I showed students how to do for example, the Google Docs inserting charts into presentations. We made a math vocabulary YouTube video. And then I did a video of the PowerPoint um, of the lesson in algebra. And uh, again, you can view that through SlideShare. Uh, basically did all the lessons for this particular chapter. Okay, and then for reading, I did um, a presentation, so be it was a book that we read in class and we wrote some notes and vocabulary that went with it. And I gave some explanations of the home reading log, uh, listened to textbook stories in the wiki page, sample stories, and important links for reading. I assigned them to read newspapers so they, they had the links to go and do a report on an article that they read. Um, I also added some more links in other pages, but those are the ones that I use the most.